Good evening. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome to our celebration of Mass. It's the fourth Sunday in Lent. Welcome if you join us online. We have another epic gospel tonight. Not only epic in length, but epic in its uh, invitation, in its realisation for us as we hear it that uh, the gifts that Jesus speaks about are ours already through baptism, like last week. Uh, it's life through water, and tonight, new sight, the vision of the world in a new way as a member of the family of God. So to learn and live the word, and to be nourished for that learning and living by the Holy Eucharist, worthily, we call to mind our sins. We ask God's pardon. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconcile the whole human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant me, pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the whole Christian people may hasten towards the solemn celebrations of Easter to come. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <coughs> a reading from the first book of Samuel The Lord said to Samuel Fill your horn with oil and go I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem For I have chosen myself a king among his sons When Samuel arrived He caught sight of Eliah And thought Surely the Lord's anointed, one stands there before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Take no notice of his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. God does not see as man sees. Man looks at appearances, but the Lord looks at the heart. Jesse presented his seven sons to Samuel, but Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen these. He then asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? He answered, There is still one left, the youngest. He is out looking after the sheep. Then Samuel said to Jesse, Send for him. We will not sit down to eat until he comes. Jesse had him sent for, a boy of fresh complexion, with fine eyes and pleasant bearing. The Lord said, Come, anoint him, for this is the one. At this, Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him where he stood with his brothers, and the Spirit of the Lord seized on David and stayed with him from that day on. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me along the right path, he is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. 
You are there with your crook and your staff. With these you give me comfort. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. You were, dark, you, you were darkness once, but now you are light in the Lord. Be like children of light, for the effects of the light are seen in complete goodness and right living in truth. Try to discover what the Lord wants of you, having nothing to do with the futile works of darkness, but exposing them by contrast. The things which are done in secret are things that people are ashamed even to speak of. But anything exposed by the light will be illuminated, and anything illuminated turns into light. That is why it is said, Wake up from your sleep, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Christ, King of eternal, eternal glory. King of eternal glory. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Anyone who follows me will have the light of life. Praise to you, O Christ. King of eternal glory. Praise to you, O Christ. King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus went along, he saw a man who had been blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, for him to have been born blind? Neither he nor his parents sinned, Jesus answered. He was born blind so that the works of God might be displayed in him. For as long as the day lasts, I will carry out the work of the one who sent me. The night will soon be here when no one can work. And as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said this, he made a paste with mud and put it over the eyes of the blind man and said to him, Go and wash in the pool of Suleiman. So the blind man went off and washed himself and came away with his sight restored. His neighbors and people who earlier had seen him begging said, Is this the man who used to sit and beg? And some said, Yes, it is the same one. And others said, No, he only looks like him. The man himself said, I am that man. So they said to him, Then how do your eyes come to be opened? The man called Jesus, he answered, Made a paste dubbed my eyes with it and said, go and wash at Suleiman. So I went, and when I washed, I could see. And they asked, where is he? I don't know, he answered. Then they brought the man who had been blind to the Pharisees. It had been a Sabbath day when Jesus made the paste and opened the man's eyes. So when the Pharisees asked him how he had come to see, he said, he put paste in my eyes and I washed and I see. And then some of them said, the man cannot be from God. He does not keep the Sabbath. And others said, Could a sinner produce signs like this? And there was disagreement among them. So they spoke to the blind man again. What have you to say about him yourself now that he has opened your eyes? He is a prophet, the man said. However, they would not believe that the man had been blind and had gained his sight without first sending for his parents and asking them, Is this man really your son? who you say was born blind? If so, how is it that he now sees? His parents answered, We know he is our son, we know he was born blind, but we don't know how it is he can see now, or who opened his eyes. He's old enough, let him speak for himself. 
His parents spoke this out of fear of the Jews, who had already agreed to expel from the synagogue anyone who should acknowledge Jesus as the Christ. This was why his parents said, he's old enough, ask him. So the Jews sent again for the man and said to him, give glory to God. For our part, we know the man is a sinner. And the man answered, I don't know if he is a sinner. I only know that I was blind and now I see. And they said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? And he replied, I've told you once and you wouldn't listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? At this, they hurled abuse at him. You can be his disciple, they said. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses. But as for this man, we don't know where he comes from. And the man replied, Now, here is an astonishing thing. He has opened my eyes, and you don't know where he comes from. We know that God doesn't listen to sinners, but God does listen to men who are devout and do his will. Ever since the world began, it's unheard of for anyone to open the eyes of a mind who was born blind. This man were not from God. He could do nothing. Are you trying to teach us? They replied. And you a sinner through and through since you were born. And they drove him away. When Jesus heard they had driven him away, he found him and he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? So the man replied, Tell me who he is so that I may believe in you. Jesus said, You are looking at him. He is speaking to you. And the man said, Lord, I believe and worshipped him. And Jesus said, It is for judgment that I came into this world so that those without sight may see and those with sight be blind. Hearing this, some Pharisees who were present said to him, We are not blind, surely. And Jesus replied, Blind? If you were, you would not be guilty. But since you claim we see, your guilt remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I went to see Father Dennis uh, through the week. I know he's great friends and very precious to this community because he, he lived and worked here for a good number of years. Um, and uh, you all enjoyed his company. And he appears from time to time at different things. But as you know, he's not been well. He had uh, problems with his hip and his knee and a couple of big operations. And he's been recuperating and he's living in the Little Sisters. So um, I popped in to see him and he's doing great. He's, he's He's got a bit of recovery to do yet, but he's, he's a lot better than the last time I saw him when he was in the hospital. Um, and uh, chatting away, and he's quite the thing, so he sends his regards to you. Um, while I was there, I met the, the mother superior of the little sisters in Greenock. She's relatively new to Greenock, and she was chatting away because she knew that um, my mum had been there for a wee while as part of her recovery after the hospital, and that subsequently she had died. So she was chatting, and... Uh, I said, where are you from, sister? And she said, she's from Tanzania, in, in the shadow of Mount Kilimanjaro. And I said, what an extraordinary journey to go from Kilimanjaro in Tanzania and end up in Greer. And uh, she said, well, it was an interesting one. She said, if you've got two minutes, I'll tell you the story. The story was, um, she went to her local parish as a, as a young girl, and there had been a visiting priest, and he'd left a book about the Little Sisters of the Poor. And she said, I had, I had never heard of the Little Sisters of the Poor. So I read the book, and she said, I was really intrigued. She said, I, I thought, what, what a fascinating story and what a, a wonderful way to serve people as, as a sister. So she said that I, I, I got together some money, she said, and I took a nine-hour bus journey across the border um, into Kenya, and I went and stayed with the Little Sisters of the Poor community there for a couple of months. And they gradually um, in, it kindled in me that sense of vocation that God had given me, she said. And I, I duly studied, uh, professed as a sister. And uh, she said I, I was sent to do my postulancy in, in Ireland. So I got to know something about Celtic people. And then I was appointed to a convent there. And then eventually, she said, I was asked to be the superior here in Greenwich looking after people. And I, I, elderly people and, and people who are unwell. Um, and I, I found it a very inspiring story 
that someone from such a different culture could come to belief, uh, could come to religious life, could come to ministry um, of caring um, in, in such a way. And the, the, the word that struck me, because I obviously was thinking about the gospel, was graduality. Um, the way the, the parallel of sight and belief, kind of, it's kind of obvious in the gospel, isn't it? Um, uh, the man gains sight and he, his sight is believing. And of course, those who claim sight, as Jesus points out at the end, are in fact in denial about the reality that surrounds them. Um, so he acknowledges Jesus and you notice how gradually he affirms him to be a good man, a prophet, someone sent from God, and then uh, the Christ. Um, just like last week with the woman at the well. So graduality is, is kind of significant there. I, I, obviously, at the school, I, I get to meet lots of young people. Some of them have great ambition, which is wonderful. But I think when you're 14, 15, 16, it's very easy to believe that your destiny is to be a professional footballer and score the winning goal at the Champions League final or become a, an Oscar-winning actor or number one in the charts for 10 weeks running four times a year. Um, and, 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 you know, the sky's the limit, which is fine. Ambition is great. But I think as we get older, maybe we become a wee bit more realistic in, a, in our expectations of self and about how we get there. Because I think the young people think they just need to turn up and it will all happen. And we know that the number of uh, winning goal scorers at the Champions League final is minuscule in terms of the people who play football. We know that the people who win Oscars is a very small number in comparison to all those who are actors. Uh, those who um, get to number one in the charts a couple of times in, in, in a year uh, are, are tiny in comparison to all the singers and crooners that, that are on the go. So w w that gives us a wee perspective. But sometimes, and we live in a culture which says unless you get to the absolute apex of what you do immediately, you're rubbish. And, you know, we don't believe that because we know our lives of faith are about graduality and about growth and about change and about learning. And we don't expect to be canonized yesterday. We know that we're on, that's our destiny, that's certainly our calling, but we've, we've got to get there. And, and sometimes it's good to be um, reasonable about our expectations of self and about the graduality of our lives of faith. You know, the way that Mother was very inspiring to me uh, when I was chatting to her, I, I, I think people's stories about knowing the Lord and having their lives touched by Him are, are fascinating and powerful and helpful because if we have a story, if we have a narrative, if we recognize graduality in our own lives, it gives other people confidence. It says, I don't need to be canonized yesterday. I can be on the path, I can be on the way, as long as my faith, my insight, my sense of this, the presence of the Lord and who he is and how he touches my life is in a growth trajectory, as it were. If I'm growing into that, I'm doing a powerful thing. The man says to the Pharisees, I told you my story once. He said, do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples? And they don't want to become his disciples. The point that the man makes is, if you hear somebody's story, and you hear somebody's story, and you hear somebody's story, maybe you think, faith in the Lord is for people like me because it was for people like that other ordinary person. Because if we don't hear people's story and how they come gradually to faith, we can imagine that the reality is always beyond us. Whereas, in fact, the gospel suggests it is given us already. It's up to us to embrace the gift. So for the confidence to do so and to share our story in order to become those who give witness to our faith for each other and ourselves, we pray this evening. To make known our needs and prayers in the presence of God, we stand. Give to the church the perfect vision of truth and the will to serve it. Open the eyes of the faithful to the faults that hinder their ministry 
so that the light may shine through them to the glory of God. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Light in the darkness of the world, where so many stumble and fall in the blindness of pride, of false trust, of power misused, when people doubt the divine love and meet with suspicion the signs of its working, let the words of those who have known it be heard above the voices of mistrust. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Give to our families and to all the homes of their community the love that remains faithful in adversity and does not fear when hostility comes from outside. In all our meeting with others, may we speak the truth with boldness and witness to the blessings that we have received. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Have mercy on all who are blind or whose sight is failing, empower and guide those who work to treat afflictions of the eyes and bless their skill. Give courage to parents whose children have sight problems and bless their acts of care and love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. <coughs> we pray for the departed whose sins have been washed away and who live now in the light of heaven that will never fade. Grant that we may come to share with them the perfect vision of God. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. To these our general intercessions, we add prayer for our own particular and local needs. We remember those who have asked us to pray for them, especially those whom we know to be in particular need at this time. Pray for those who join us online, particularly if they are unwell, or they are caring for others, either as their vocation in life or in their own family group and friendship group. Lord will bless them, strengthen them for their generosity of spirit. Pray for our young people preparing to celebrate the sacraments of initiation, particularly First Holy Communion and Confirmation. Pray that the Lord will grant them a gradual increase in faith, in hope and in love as they take their place as members of the family of God and that their parents and sponsors may encourage them by word and example. And we pray finally for our dead. We remember those who died recently, especially Dennis O'Neill, and those whose anniversaries occur about now, particularly those we've been asked to remember in prayer. That they may all know the presence of God. Lord, hear us. God our Father, you call us to be your people and to grow in insight and in faith. Sustain us on our journey, we pray, and guide us to give witness by our story. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
Let's pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all, his holy church. We place with joy these offerings before you, Lord, for they bring eternal remedy, praying that we may be both faithfully, that we may faithfully reveal them and present them to you for the salvation of the world. Our prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ Jesus our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the whole human race that walked in darkness to the radiance of the light of faith and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of rebirth to make them his adopted children. Therefore, all creation in heaven and on earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, together with the angels and all the saints, without end, acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon this offering of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished with the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, the apostles and martyrs, St. Conville and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, the clergy, the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. 
to our departed brothers and sisters, to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, forever and ever. Amen. For the coming of God's kingdom, we pray in the words the Lord Jesus taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. O God, who enlighten all those who are in this world, illumine our hearts also, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to you and love you in all sincerity. Our prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your presence this evening. Thank you if you joined us online. Um, thank you, as ever, for your donations of money and uh, groceries for our food parcels that are available in the porch. If you know anyone in need, please take one for them uh, and wish them well for us. Um, a second collection this week is for SIAF, a, a rightly uh, famed international charity, which is our very own. And there's a wee letter available from the Bishop President, uh, Father uh, Bishop Brian, um, if you wish some background, it's available on the websites and so on, as usual, um, as are all our usual notices in the bulletin on the website and on our Facebook page. Tomorrow's Mother's Day, so I hope those of you who are mothers get a little spoiled um, and that you can enjoy uh, a, a day uh, which is orientated towards you, you who give so much um, also deserve to receive. So I hope you enjoy your day. Thanks uh, for being here tonight. Hope you have a nice evening and a good week. And we ask God's blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.